Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we will cover one more topic in Spring Framework series on the annotation based configuration. So without any further delay, let's start. Now we know we can provide the configuration details in Spring using XML annotations and both as well. But the question is, are annotations better than the XML configuration in Spring? This can also be a potential question for your interview. So let's find out. Each approach has its own pros and cons. And usually it is up to the developer to decide which strategy suits them better. Annotation provides a lot of context to their declaration, leading to a shorter and more concise configuration. However, XML is very good in wiring the components without touching the source code or recompiling them. That means if you are using annotations, then you are directly making changes in the Java, which is not in case of XML configuration. No matter the choice, Spring can accommodate both styles and even mix of them as well. That means you can use either annotation based or XML or also you can use mix of both these techniques as well. So now what will happen if we provide configuration for same component in both annotation and XML but with different details. Then which configuration will take precedence? So annotation injection is performed before XML injection. Thus, XML configuration overrides the annotation for properties wired through both approaches. Now, let's see how we can use at the rate auto wired annotation. At the rate auto wired is a spring framework annotation used for dependency injection. It is used to specify that a particular member variable, constructor, or a setter method should be automatically wired with the bean from application context or the spring IOC container. The process of wiring beans using annotation is called auto wiring. And the beans that are wired using this mechanism are referred as auto wired beans. So here is a simple example to illustrate the use of at the rate auto wired. Let's say we have a service class message service that sends message. As it is annotated with at the rate service, its bean lifecycle will be managed automatically by Spring IOC container. Then we have another class which is let's say message printer that is actually using the service to send the message. The previous service which we have seen message service. So the printer class will use that particular service to send the messages. So in this example, the message printer class has a member variable message service that is annotated with at the rate auto wire. This means that whenever a message printer object is created, the message service bean from the application context will be automatically wired and injected into this message service variable. The same can be done for constructor or setter method as well. This allows for loose coupling between message printer and message service classes because there is no code written to create an object of message service class inside message printer, thus making it easier to change the implementation of message service class without affecting message printer class as well. I hope this part is clear. This is a very important concept. So if you are not clear, please do let me know in the comment section. I will try to explain. Everything will be fine if we have only one implementation of dependency, then auto wired will be able to resolve it automatically by type. So what that means? What, what is the meaning of automatically resolving it by the type? The type here means object of a specific class. Suppose we have one object or bean of type message service in the container. Then using at the rate auto wired annotation, Spring IRC container will automatically inject that one instance to wherever auto wired is mentioned. But when we have multiple implementation of a single dependency, then there will be problems with auto wired. So in that case, auto wired will not work. So how this issue can be resolved? So for that, we can use another annotation, which is at the rate primary annotation. This annotation indicates that which bean should be given precedence when more than one bean is already present of the same type. Say we have two different implementation of one interface, then which implementation will be more preferred that can be defined using this annotation. We have to make sure that there should only be one primary bean among all the acceptable beans itself. Now let's see how we can fine tune it further using another annotation which is at the rate qualifiers. We may use the qualifier annotation to clearly indicate the bean name and tell Spring which dependency should be called when more than one bean of the same type is present. This annotation can only be used in conjunction with at the rate auto wired. Now let's check this with an example. 
For example, we have this interface message service with an abstract method send message. And let's say we have two different implementations of this service, message service A and message service B. Both service A and service B are annotated with at the rate service to indicate that they are spring beans and each one is also annotated with at the rate qualifier to specify a unique identifier for each bean. So here we have message service A for message service A and B for message service B. Now let's see the other class using this service to print the message. In this class, it has a member variable message service which is annotated with both at the rate auto wired and at the rate qualifier. But if you see in the qualifier, we are providing one name as well. So what it will do, it will check the bean present in Spring IOC container with that name and inject that particular instance in this particular class. If we have provided message service B, then that instance will be injected. The qualifier annotation helps to avoid the ambiguity in wiring process and provides a way to specify which beans should be wired in case where there are multiple beans of the same type available. Now the question arises that what will happen if we use at the rate primary and qualifier together because the working of both of these annotations looks similar. This is also another potential question for the interview. So let's find out its answer. Both the annotations can be used together, but only one can be executed at a time because they have different priorities. So which one will have the more precedence? At the rate qualifier has higher priority than at the rate primary annotation. So if both the annotations are used, then at the rate qualifier will be considered. Now let's see one more way using another annotation at the rate resource. So at the rate resource is another annotation used for dependency injection. It is not specific to Spring Framework and it is similar to at the rate autowired annotation which is there in Spring Framework. Let's say we already have a service class message service which we have discussed in our previous example and we have another class message printer that is using that previous service to send the message. A member variable in the message printer class message service which is annotated with at the rate resource annotation. This means that when message printer object is created the message service bean from the application context will be automatically wired and injected in this particular class. The resource annotation provides a way to specify the bean that should be wired either by specifying the name of the bean or by using type of the bean. In this example, the type of the bean is used so that container will look for the bean of type message service and then wire it. In case of multiple beans of the same type, we can use name attribute of this annotation and provide the name which will be used to wire required bean just like in this example. Similarly, we have one more annotation which is at the rate inject annotation which can also be used to wire the beans. I will not go in detail for that annotation and leave it for you to explore more. And in case you have any queries, please do let me know. Now, if you see all these three annotations which we have discussed at the rate auto wired, inject and resources, they does the same work. So why do we have three different annotations for the same work? Even though the main motive of using these annotations is to wire the beans, but they differ in the execution path taken to find the required bean to inject. So let's see what is the main difference here. So the resource annotation will narrow down the search first by name, then by type and finally by the qualifiers if it is available. But in case of auto wired and inject, they will narrow down the search first by type, then by qualifier and if it is not found, finally by the name of the bean. Also, auto wired is specific to Spring Framework, but inject and resource are not Spring Framework based. They belong to JSR standards. Now let's check one more annotation and after that we can conclude this video. So next we have at the rate value annotation, which is typically used to inject the externalized properties. So what are externalized properties like some configuration details, which is available on the external sources, not in the Java code itself. It can be in the properties file or in some remote server as well. So suppose we have a property file application dot properties with a key and value category dot name is equal to test. So in this case category dot name is the key and test is the value and we want to read this value in our Java code. So there at the rate value annotation is very helpful. We can use at the rate value and name of the key on top of the field to which we want to assign the value. 
also we can use it to pass as a method parameter thus the same value will be passed to a method as well it is also possible that that external properties file may not contain any key or value combination of that name which we are providing so for such cases we can also provide a defa default value using add the rate value then name of the key colon some default value so in case that key is not present in the properties file or in the external configuration file the default value will be taken that's it for this video we will cover some more concepts of spring framework in the next video please let me know if you want me to cover some specific topics in spring i hope this video was helpful to you in case you like it please share it across your dev community also don't forget to like and comment with your feedback thank you so much for watching keep learning